Thank you very much, uh, Vicky. It's uh, a very robust statement, as one would always expect from the British High Commissioner. Um, and it's one with which I have to concur. I mean, let me just, if I may add, um, the science and technology relationship is another very important element, as are the people-to-people uh, -people, uh, connections through tourism and uh, business visits. Uh, Europe remains very, very important to us uh, now and for the, for the future. Uh, in, the, in the years past, as we uh, looked at uh, the uh, financial crisis that was uh, hitting not just Europe but the world, um, uh, one of the main figures that stood out as a very uh, sound and secure voice in that uh, discussion in Europe was Chancellor Angela Merkel, representing um, uh, the, in effect a country that has often been called the powerhouse of of Europe, and it's uh, my very great pleasure to have uh, the Chancellor's representative here in Wellington, Dr. Dr. Anne Marie Schlake, uh, speak to you now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter, um, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I would like to talk about two things, uh, following uh, what Vicky, my colleague, uh, was saying. But first, um, talking about the elections, and secondly, what does Germany mean for the U European Union, and what does the European Union mean for Germany? The elections, the upcoming elections, and uh, it has been um, <coughs> talked about before, I think, are very, very important, because Europe needs a very strong parliament, and the European Parliament needs a very strong democratic mandate from the citizens of Europe. Why? Because, after all, a lot of the decisions that are taken by the European Parliament, but also by the European Council and the Commission, have immediate consequences on the lives of every single European citizen. I'll give you two examples. We talked about mobile phones. Vodafone and others, the fact that European citizens can now use their mobile phones abroad, mainly in the European countries, in 28 European countries, without having to worry about the clock ticking, is a result of European legislation. Another example, the fact that savings accounts of up to 100,000 euros are protected, fully protected, all over Europe, all over the 28 European countries, is a result of European legislation. Binding reductions in the emissions of dangerous substances is a result of European legislation. So matters that concern European citizens every day are actively debated in that European Parliament that's going to be elected, such as data protection, climate policy, the treatment of refugees, measures to promote social cohesion, and many more examples. And therefore, in the elections, in the European elections, we are not voting for a grand European idea, but for very concrete policies. Let me talk about Germany in the EU. European integration is one of the fundamental keystones, principles of German foreign policy. The participation of Germany, of the Federal Republic of Germany, in a united Europe is anchored in our constitution, in Grundgesetz, in the basic law. The two catastrophic events of last century, World War I and World War II, were followed by the division of Europe and the Cold War. These upheavals led to a deep mark, it left a deep mark on all European nations and especially on a divided Germany. Five years after World War II, it was the vision of Jean Monnet, the creation of a united Europe, that started a wonderful and brilliant idea. Five years later, the idea of the Foreign Minister of France, Schumann, to create and integrate Germany into a European coal and steel union was the basis of the European Union. Who would have thought that in 1945? And Germany, in 1957, was one of the founders of those six-nation union that later became 
the European Union of 28 member states. The two key parameters of German foreign policies are never again and never alone. Never again means no more authoritarianism, no more expansion-oriented policies. And never alone means, well, we have to be part of the European Union, embedding Germany in the community of European Western democracies and especially the European Union. Rebuilding Germany after World War II would have not been possible without the European Union. Reunification of East Germany with West Germany would not have been possible without the European Union. And let me just talk about the recent uh, financial crisis that has been touched upon uh, by Vicky. Reforms have been initiated, balanced budgets have been balanced, but unfortunately the crisis damaged the social part of the social framework of Europe. And it is now important to give people the confidence that together we can not only overcome economic problems, but we can also overcome the tackle the unemployment and the social problems that have been created in the last four years. And Europe is moving in the right direction, but still needs, a lot needs to be done. Um, you have seen recently Ireland and Portugal two days ago have already left the Europe as a rescue fund. And yesterday um, we saw that Greece, Greece marvelously came out of the um, economic difficulties and it has finally reached a surplus of 300 um, and it has reached a surplus in 2013. And um, the government last week, the Greek government, launched a very successfully a bond market. Um, so I think Greece is on a wonderful way back to recovery. Unfortunately, the unemployment rate is much too high and many packages will, need, will be needed to kind of reduce that problem. And so I think the European Union gives us hope and we need these elections to really come to give hope to the European citizens. Thank you very much.